We're talking today about better when we serve together, Ephesians 4. You can find uh, your place there in Ephesians 4. We'll look at that in just a few moments. We're better when we serve together when we serve like this. Take a look at this. Yes, we do say thank you. Did you know that? It's, amen. Yeah. Let's give it up for all of our servers. It's, you know, it's an act of worship. It's not just something you sign up to do and you do it half-heartedly or kind of begrudgingly or it's an obligation. It's, something, it's an act of worship. It's, it's as important as what we just experienced with singing the songs of worship before the Lord, serving. And it's one of our 12 core values. We've been looking at the 12 core values uh, all of 2020. We may have to dip into 2021. I don't know. We're moving kind of at a slower pace than I thought we would. But today we're going to look at serving with excellence. That's a, that's a core value because that's what Jesus did. Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. And he is our greatest example, isn't he? So that's the way that we love God the most is through our serving, and it's something that is important around here because uh, if we want to be like Jesus, we want to do what Jesus did, and we want to fulfill the great commission. If you're wondering what the mission of celebration, why we do what we do around here, or why, did, why you're part of this church, it's simply to do what Jesus said. We're partnering. We're, it's a co-mission. Jesus brought that mission. He handed the baton to you and me, and now we are to go and make disciples of all nations. It's what we do here, uh, the Great Commission. And we do that in a number of ways. We do that by being connected. You can, in fact, see it up above here, be connected, be, con be fruitful. We, we do that. We, we get together in groups. We sit around in a circle and we look over the, the Bible. We do a book study. We, we learn to become followers and disciples of Jesus in what we call C groups. These are smaller group meetings where uh, we get and, and we come alongside each other. There's fun things too. We got a hiking group that meets and they go hike the all kinds of places. It's good fellowship. We've got a diners club. They go to some of the diners in our area. So there's all kinds of these smaller environments where you can be connected. You can get to know each other and come alongside each other and do life together. And when we're connected, Jesus said in John chapter 15, when you remain in me, you're connected to me, you're going to be fruitful. And that's what we want to be as well. We want to be fruitful. And one of the ways that we demonstrate that fruitfulness is in our C teams. Now, C teams is, a, is just an, another word to say it, it's one of our serving teams. And we've got a lot of them in operation not only this morning, but throughout the week. Now, if you're not sure what a C team is or you're not on a C team, uh, maybe there's a number of reasons. Uh, maybe the first reason would be you didn't know you were needed. <laughs> Well, hopefully, we can clear that up this morning. You just didn't know that uh, there were certain needs and different roles that you can play to, to make this a great church, and, and there are. Uh, maybe another reason is uh, you're an American, and kind of a, a hidden goal, maybe it's not so hidden, is to be autonomous, to have complete control of our schedule and our time. We don't want anybody to tell us what to do. We want to wake up in the morning and say, what do I want to do today? Isn't that re what retirement is all about? Nobody's telling you what to do. You can shop when you want, golf when you want, craft when you want, hunt when you want. I mean, that's kind of where we're all, in a way, headed towards. It's nothing necessarily bad about that, but it's definitely in our, our DNA as a culture. 
But sometimes when it comes to serving in the church, I, I, I know what you're thinking. I know, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, man, if I get on one of those C teams, one of those serving teams, that's just another someone or another something that has a hook in my schedule and in my time. And I'm not looking for more of that. I'm looking for less of that. I want to get up on a Sunday morning and decide and choose to go to church if I get on one of those teams, then they're going to be expecting me. It's going to be an obligation. Then somebody's going to be dependent on me. And I, again, I'm, I'm trying to get less of that in my life, not more of that. I completely understand. Then others of you, uh, you may not know that uh, you're, you're maybe not clear on what it means to be a Christian. And again, I pointed out what Jesus said. I came not to be served but to serve, he's our greatest example. So part of the Christian experience, a major part, is learning to serve, coming alongside others and serving. Because really, whether you're a Christian or not, uh, maybe you're not a church person, but maybe, maybe you are, uh, God doesn't view you autonomous, as, as autonomous. He doesn't view you as just self-governing and self-sufficient. Now, there's some good aspects of that, self-governing your emotions, uh, you know, being sufficient and doing, if you're responsible for something, you can't push that burden on somebody else. So there's some good aspects. But when it comes to church life, God doesn't see you as, as separate. He sees you as part of a body. When you got saved, he put you in a body. He put you in a family. Now, don't think a church. Don't think a building. Don't think an organization. Don't even necessarily think a team necessarily. Think that you're a part of a body. And it's so significant that God has even a will and a plan for your life and my life that works in tandem with other believers so that we can accomplish more as an army than a bunch of lone rangers. So we are part of a body. And God has, uh, God has e e given us that opportunity to, to join together, to, to work together. Now, after all, that's what Jesus said to pray. He said, pray that his kingdom comes, his will, his agenda, his purpose, his desires be done on earth, not your own. So, it's important to understand how important service is here today. Now, if you're a, if you're a follower of Jesus, I, now I didn't say Christian, because that term Christian is uh, overused and underdefined. Everybody's a Christian, aren't they? And I didn't even say believer, same thing. That's overused and underdefined to be a believer. The Bible even says even the demons believe, so believing is really not the big thing. It's are you a follower of Jesus where you believe so wholeheartedly that you're not just going to let it go in one ear and out the other. You're going to do. You're going to believe. You're going to follow the ways of Jesus. So if you're a follower of, of Jesus here today, guess what? You've been called because to use your gifts, your talents and abilities that God has given you, he's given you certain gifts and abilities, and, and you've been called to use them for his glory. That's, that's why we've been put on this earth, to use him for his glory and uh, to do his will because you've been called by God, you've been commissioned by God, and you've been equipped by God, and you and I, we've been empowered by God, whether you've accessed this, this power or not, because we're a part of this body. We're not a bunch of superhero action figures, lone rangers out there. We're part of of a body. Now, the last thing I want to do here this morning is to, to use guilt to get you to sign up on one of our serving teams because, you know, commitment level is going to be low and maybe you won't serve with the right heart or right attitude. Um, and if you say to me, Pastor Mike, you know, I, I'm, just, I'm just not ready right now. I need to heal a little bit more. Uh, maybe you're kind of new and you're thinking, well, I'm not sure this is my home church. I just, I'm just not ready right now. Or maybe you're like, uh, I just don't want to be responsible for anything right now. And maybe that's true. Maybe you got a lot on your plate and now's not the right time for you. But you're like, I don't want to be on anybody's list. I don't want somebody calling me. I just want to come. I want to find my seat, sing the songs, take a few notes, and go home. <laughs> and if that's your decision, that's your decision. Uh, but here's the good news about that is guess what? The kingdom of God will go on without you. The church is going to be okay. 
Um, you're just not that important. Now, don't hear me wrong. You're important. But God is bigger than your willingness or your unwillingness, than my willingness or my unwillingness. The thing is, the problem isn't that we're not going to be okay. The problem is that you're not going to be okay. Why? Because God designed you. It's a part of your Christian DNA to use what he's given you in service for him to bless somebody else. And the more that you uh, are refreshed, you're going to refresh others. Freely you have received, now freely give, Jesus taught us to do that. You're designed to take the abilities that God has given you. I mean, listen, if you were to ask me what God's will is for your life, uh, should I move to Pittsburgh? Should I uh, marry this person? Should I date this person? Should I go back to school? I wouldn't be able to tell you what that is. But if I know a part of God's will for you is to bring the gifts and abilities that he's given you and work in tandem with other believers so that we can accomplish more as an army than a bunch of lone rangers out there. So it's important to understand that we've been called and commissioned and uh, equipped and empowered to uh, do what God has called us to do. Now, the book of Ephesians, it's, uh, that's where we're going to land for a few verses here this morning. The Apostle Paul writes a letter to the church in this, this Greek city of Ephesus. And it's, he's written it to this brand new church. In fact, Paul is the one who planted this church three years earlier. So he writes this letter to help them understand what the, the nature and purpose of the church is. And again, don't think church building. Think people. Think a body. Think a functioning body. So he says, this is what the purpose is, uh, why we do what we do. And so let's jump into verse 4, and we'll look at what it says here. There is one body... And one spirit, just as you are called to one hope when you are called. He goes on to say, there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. He's not done yet. Then he says, there's one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Now, let's not make interpreting Scripture more difficult than it can be. What is the theme of those three verses? I've highlighted them for you this morning. One, right? There's a certain oneness. There's a lot of theological components here. But there's, there's a, a oneness that is huge. Even though the person next to you is different. Red and yellow, black and white. Uh, there's, they come from different family backgrounds, different uh, religious backgrounds, different skills and jobs and talents and abilities. Though, though we're all different, there's a oneness that is huge. And, and when you become a Christian, you're placed in a body. You're not seen as just this autonomous person out there. Now, that goes against the independent, independent spirit of America, but if God was to say to you right now, he said, you're a Christian first and an American second. Now, I know that, that that can be hard to imagine. We kind of filter everything. We filter the Bible. We think filter Christianity through our, our Western American uh, filter. But, man, we're, we're not uh, self-made. We're not uh, independent of each other. We are part of a body. And uh, we're Christians first. In fact, the Bible says you're strangers in this world. You're aliens. You're not of this world. Anybody remember Petra, this Christian rock group, Petra? We are strangers. We are aliens. We are not of this world. Anybody remember? Come on. That's early 80s. Okay, some of you. Yeah, a great song. Um, but th the Bible says you're, not, you're a citizen of a different kingdom. So there's something unusual, there's something unique about the body of Christ and that how connected we are to be. And so he goes on from here and he says this, each of you were given grace by Christ who apportioned it. Every single one of you have been given something. Now this isn't the grace that you pray around before your meal. This isn't... Um, this isn't uh, a grace period that is sometimes nice to have. This isn't even saving grace because he wrote these to people who are already believers. This word grace in the Greek means divine enablement, means you were graced with something. You were graced with just a, an ability. 
ability, a skill, a talent, just a knack to do certain things well. Now, you can't do everything well, can you? But there's something you can do. You may be scratching your head like, well, I'm not sure. But yes, there's something in you that you do well. I mean, you see that in your family, you see that at work, you see that at school, you see that, that, that even though we're different, um, we have unique abilities and skills because we've been divinely enabled. Um, there's some people who are great administrators, they're great organizers, there's some that are great leaders, there's some that are great communicators, there's some that are great doers, they're behind the scenes kind of person. There's some people that are insightful. They just, they're just wise. They just have great common sense. There's some people that are very intuitive when it comes to relationships. They just do relationships so well. You've been gifted. There's certain things that you do well. Uh, and think about this. Paul was writing this 2,000 years before there was Myers-Briggs or Taylor Johnson, or MMPI, okay? The Holy Spirit revealed this to Paul. This is something that is Holy Spirit-driven, and, 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 and it's something that Christ gives you those gifts. My mother-in-law, she's one of the most organized persons I know, and she's watching right now. So, Granny, I know you're shouting me down right now. She stood up in her, her rocker, and she's like, yeah, that's right. I mean, she just, she can organize so well. Uh, Teresa, who runs our books, and others, uh, I see Steve Provard and, and Crystal and Paul, they serve on our financial team. It would take me three times as long to, to no, I can't even say that. I couldn't even do what they do. They just, they're gifted in those ways. They're good at it. Some of you would never get up here and, and, and talk in front of people. You're terrified of getting up on, on the platform. I mean, even if I was standing here choking and you were sitting on the front row, you still wouldn't go get me a drink of water. You'd be like, well, he's not blue yet. <laughs> Maybe a shade of red, but uh, he'll be okay. He'll, he'll get over it. I mean, you're like, how do you get up there and speak the way you do? And I'm like, I don't know. How do you organize so well? How do you administrate so well? It's something you're gifted. God gave you that. It's your bent. It's, your, it's just something that he put inside of you. And, and so that... So that you can function, you can be productive uh, outside the church and inside the body of Christ. But why would God do that? Why didn't he just do everything? Because we're the church. He's called us. He's, we are his hands and feet. And so he, uh, he, he's gifted us. Now, if you go on in this uh, verse, uh, uh, actually the next few verses, Paul does a little sidebar. We're going to skip over that. He's talking to Jewish Christians, those who have converted from Judaism, and he's using some Old Testament passages, Psalm 68, that really say basically that the divine gift giver came from God. That's Jesus is the divine gift giver. Jump down to verse 11, because here he gives a brief description of some of the things that God has gifted different people to do. Look what he says. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers... Now, that's a whole sermon series right there, and I want to tackle that real soon because that is so important that we incorporate all the gifts that Christ has given the church. Now, you get to hear the pastor-teacher gift every week. A few weeks ago, we had an evangelist in, and that's a unique gifting, uh, and, and, and we got to benefit from that. And all these other gifts are important. Sometimes we don't know what to do with the role of the prophet or what's, what's an apostle these days. Again, we're not going to take the time to explain that now, but he's given these different gifts to the church for a reason, and here's why. It says it in the next verse, to equip his people for works of what? Service. I mean, service can encompass a lot of different things, but there's, there's something that he's equipped you and I to do when it comes to serving. And that word equip is a beautiful word. In the Greek, it, 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 it also means um, to prepare. Maybe a version says to prepare you for works of service. That word is the same word used earlier in the New Testament in the Gospels when they were mending their nets. They were preparing their nets for the next trip out because when they'd bring in the fish, there would be holes that needed to be mended. And so it was, it's the idea of equipping, meaning to, to fix broken things so that they're useful again. Isn't that a picture of you and I, the church, a bunch of broken people coming together and getting fixed and getting mended? 
Isn't that something when you first kind of come around the gospel, you're not sure if God even likes you? And you're like, man, what could I ever do? I don't know, I just don't even feel worthy. And all of a sudden you experience God's grace and mercy and you're like, wow, I never knew I could feel so light. My sin has been forgiven. It's just a, it's a great experience, isn't it? And then all of a sudden you're like, man, if I feel that, I want other people to feel that. And then all of a sudden you're, you're wanting to reach out to other people and tell your story and, hey, come to my church and we got this going on. We got this group and we got that group and we're going we're gonna to do this living it project where, you know, we're not asking people to come into the church. We're going to their front lawn. Now, we won't show up without permission or without better or, uh, some organization, but isn't that an amazing way for us to impact our community? Instead of expecting them to walk through these doors, to go and meet them where they are with a shovel, with a rake, with some paintbrushes, with just lo loving them first. You know, and you experience that. And it, it, it's wonderful to experience that. And, and, it, and something happens where we just want to give that to other people. We want to we wanna take other broken people and help their hearts to get mended uh, so that we can, you know, bring our gifts and, and those things that we do, I'll bring them alongside I'm using my teaching gift here this morning to inspire and motivate you to bring your gifts and let's work together because we're so better together, aren't we? I mean, this basement project has been so wonderfully unifying for our church. That's why I bought these, these bibs. <laughs> I haven't used them yet. You can see they, <laughs> they're pretty clean. I bought these a couple weeks ago thinking I'm going to get down there doing every Tuesday night's come. I've had some kind of pastoral emergency, but that's okay because I'm using my gifts in a different way. Some of you would not want to get into some situations pastorally that I get into. You'd rather go down there and drill your screw gun in or put up some drywall or whatever. But it's so wonderful to see our church coming together and doing some amazing things. You can't do that job right there alone. You need a couple other brothers helping or sisters. We've had all kinds of people. Uh, helping each other out, working together, all kinds of different skills and abilities. I think one of the neatest things that's happened is not building the rooms down there. It's the relationships that are being built. The mentoring, because that's the church. It's not the structure. It's the relationships that are being built in our church. People that you didn't really know. Now you're, you're coming alongside and doing something bigger and better because we're doing it together. See, that's, that's the church in, func in operation. Now, I'm not sure what Dan's doing there. I think he's watching again. <laughs> he told me after first service, no, I was supervising. Well, there's always got to be a chief, right? <laughs> so isn't that wonderful, though? People getting together to work together, using our gifts. And, and here's, here's the reason why. Again, I already mentioned it. It's to do something bigger together. But here's the biblical reason why. We're, we're to be equipped for works of service so that, now here comes the purpose, so that the body of Christ may be built up. And, and not only just built up, but look at the next following verses, all that is encompassed here, till we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. And here's... Here's the thing that blows me up, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. How do you get there? Will we ever get there? The, attaining to the full measure of Christ. Wow. That takes unity. That takes iron sharpening iron. That takes bringing all our gifts together and working together, getting to know each other. You can't do this alone. You can't do this on a mount. You can't reach the fullness of Christ on a mountaintop by yourself. God put us in a body. He put us in a family so that we can attain to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. You know, when Jesus was on earth, he was only at one place at one time. And, but he was the the, the fullness of the Godhead was in Jesus. Jesus was the, the eyes, the ears, the hands, the feet of God. Jesus was God in a bod. And after, after he rose from the dead one day, he said, guess what? I'm leaving you, but don't worry because it's going to get better. Because the same spirit that resides in me, you've watched, you've seen the spirit expressed through me. The same spirit that re resides in me is going to reside in you. 
Because I'm going to pour gifts into you, gifts of my mercy, gifts of my compassion. I know you don't have that capacity on your own. Sometimes we get selfish, right? God gives you an extra gift of compassion and mercy uh, and the ability to lead and to administrate and to do all these different things. And when you bring those gifts together, you can't get any closer to the presence of God than that then when you're working together in tandem with other believers, bringing your gifts together, that's as close to the presence of God that we can get. And Jesus said that. He promised it. Where two or three are gathered, guess what he said? There I am. Is he there in the worship service? Yes. Is he there when I lay hands on somebody? Yes. But you know what? He's there when we just gather and we work together and we bring our gifts together. He's there. His presence is there. You may think, well, can I, can I just be alone and be with Jesus? I got my playlist. I got my favorite podcast. I'm pretty religious about watching those. Well, that's good and that's helpful, but that falls short to what Paul is talking about. You can't get there by yourself to, to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And outside the body of Christ, you're going to get weird. You are. There's going to be no accountability, no spiritual authority. I mean, with the Internet, you can find out anything you want, every kind of conspiracy theory, but without some checks and balances as far as brothers and sisters in the Lord and some accountability, some spiritual leadership, you can get really weird. And so together, we're better. And serving together is the ultimate way to experience such a presence of Christ. And the Holy Spirit shows up in just unmistakable, amazing ways. And really, that's, that's one of the most best things that we can do in our community. It's not just out there being the Lone Ranger, using our individual gifts and expertise. That's good. But, man, when we bring them together, we're, we're so much bigger and better together. Um, so that we can... You know, have, a, have an experience. Now, this isn't all of church, just a Sunday morning. I hope this isn't your only church experience at Celebration. There's so much more that goes on, and there's so many connections to make that go beyond the 60 minutes that we're here. But, you know, to create an environment where visitors come in, where skeptics come in, non-believers come in, and they come in contact, they come into your presence, whether it's here, whether it's at work, whether it's on the sidelines at games, whether it's in the homeowners association that you're a part of, where they, they come into contact with you and they're like, whoa, there's just something different about her. There's something. Did you, did you see the way he speaks to his wife? Wow. Have you been to that church? Man, there's just something there. I hear that every membership class. I, I hear time and time again people say, you know, Pastor Mike, when I first started coming, as soon as I walked through those dirt doors, I started to cry. I don't even know what it was. It wasn't necessarily just the songs or just the sermon. It was just being there. I, I, I cried. You know what that is? That's this verse in action right there where we're bringing our gifts together and we're... And we're We're doing something that's bigger than ourselves. I can't preach a sermon and then run the sound. And I can't do all these other things. It takes all of us. And when people come into contact with us, they say, wow, there's just something different. That's why our attitude is so important. That's why we got to love and and each other, even within the body, sometimes better than we do. Because that's what Jesus said. He said, they're going to know you're my followers, not by necessarily the miracles you do. Those are great attention getters. Those will stir a revival, but, you know, it's not by the great worship. They will know you're my followers by how you love each other. Wow. That's a high calling to us, isn't it, as a church? And that's why we want to serve with excellence. And that's why for you to be gifted of God and not plugged anywhere, guess what? You miss out. We miss out. And they miss out. Well, if that's not compelling enough, he goes on in verses 14 and 16, and we'll just kind of go through this real quick. Then we will no longer be infants. In other words, he's saying, if you're not connected, you're not going to grow. You're going to stay a baby Christian the rest of your life. 
It's in our connection that we grow and hold each other accountable and we get in groups where we're learning things about God's Word. You'll no longer be infants and then you won't be tossed back and forth by the waves. Aren't people all over the place? Don't you sometimes feel all over the place? You hear this and maybe I should believe that and then, oh, that, that sounds good, I believe that. Sometimes we're all over the place, aren't we? Tossed to and fro. Blown by here and, and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. He says... Instead, speak the truth in love, and we will grow to become, in every respect, the mature body of him who is the head. That is Christ. There's, there's the expectation to grow. If you've been coming to this church for five years and your marriage hasn't gotten better, I mean, I know sometimes it gets worse because you start confronting issues, but if, if, if your life hasn't gotten better or stronger and you've been here for a long time, I, I, I question how committed you really are to your own spiritual growth and how, uh, you know, how, much, how involved you are in learning and reading and praying and being in groups that encourage that. There's a, there's a forward momentum that should occur in your life. And I know sometimes we take some steps backwards and we get knocked over because we didn't anticipate this crisis and this thing and it shakes our faith and all kinds of things. But in the long run, we ought to be growing. And that's what he's saying. If you're connected, you're going to grow into a mature body. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love. As each part, each part, each part, every single person does that work. I heard the parent of a toddler tell me that their, their toddler would get up every day and say, is, is this the church day? Is this church day this week? You know, they couldn't wait to get here. How does that happen? It's, it's not a teacher who shows up and just kind of filling a responsibility. Well, I only got three months more and then my, my, I'm done. No, it's, it's somebody that has a real heart. In fact, this teacher wrote me and said, no offense, Pastor Mike, I love your sermons, but I've learned more about the Lord by serving in kids' life ministry. The children teach me every week. And it's not just about the kids. Something is going on inside of me. Yeah, I, want, I went into it to fill a slot, but God has done so much in my own life. I'm not quitting I have grown so much. Wow. Yeah. You may be here like, well, man, I don't, I don't know what I do well. You said, you said everybody is gifted and <laughs> divinely enabled. I, I think I got skipped because I'm just so average. I'm not so sure. Well, let's get together and let's discover maybe some of those gifts. Pastor Ben and Angela will come alongside you as well and give you a gift assessment and you can understand maybe what some of your natural abilities are and you probably know some of them already but if you're not sure what they are and they'll help you to get plugged into certain roles that fit you know who you are in fact right after this service Angela's going to be over by the C team's table in fact you were given on your way in a nice brochure that has incredible amounts of things ways that you could step up to serve and be a part of, of serving in this church. And it's not about signing up today. Or it's not about signing up and this is what you do for the rest of your life. <laughs> Try it for three months. Try it for six months. You may discover what you're good and what you're not good at. You may sign up to be a greeter thinking, yeah, I see him handing out bulletins. I can do that. And so you start handing out bulletins, but then you come to realize, oh, I got to open up my mouth. <laughs> I got to say hi. I got to be non threatening. I got to just, you know, be friendly. And you're like, well, that, that's, that, that, that's not, well, not that you're not friendly, but it's just maybe doesn't come easy for you. So maybe you're a person, you're kind of a techie person. You love buttons, you love knobs. And man, do we have opportunities for you. And there's something there that maybe you just haven't tapped into. Um, I know during COVID, we've added a third service and kind of spreading things out. Uh, we only run kids' ministry in the second service, this service, but we'd like to add a second service to do that. Uh, but we need more help in that room, and we'll get you trained, we'll get you certified, we'll get you all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, we only live stream this service. God bless you for tuning in. And I, I've heard so many people say, thank you, Pastor Mike. Even live streaming the revival service was so important for people who couldn't get here or just weren't comfortable for, for coming yet. But we want to live stream all three. And so we need some help in that area. 
running a camera, running some knobs. We need, uh, you know, these cameras are like almost 10 years old. We're, we're looking at different ways that we can upgrade even our live stream uh, presence. And so we need, there's, you know, a lot of great exciting things we can do with that. And we need a production uh, manager, somebody to kind of run all those cameras and who, who's, who's on, who's off, you know, those kind of things. Uh, I mean, there's incredible needs. And, and we are an online world. Whether you like it or not, this is, <laughs> this is a big field. There's a huge congregation, more people tuning in right now than are here in person. So we can be the old kind of church that we expect people to go to the mall these days, but not a lot of people go to the malls as much as they shop on Amazon. So maybe we got to just change. Everybody's had to change. This is a good way for us to change and to keep, uh, keep getting the word out there. So anyways, there's a lot of opportunities. Please stop by the table. You don't have to sign up today, but take a look at it. Talk to Angela, and she'll help you know where you can fit in. I, I need to end here real quick. And, uh, maybe one of the biggest reasons people don't get involved, and believe me, I understand this one. You'd say, Pastor Mike, I, uh, I just don't have the time. I just don't have the time. What you really mean is, I just don't want to make the commitment, because we all have the same amount of time. And here's where you kind of put yourself in a little awkward situation with God. Because you may pray, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for all you've given me. I thank you for salvation. I thank you uh, for my health and my wealth and my kids and my spouse and my girlfriend, my, my fiance, for my job and my talents and abilities. God, you've given me so, so very much. And Lord, I'm going to ask you to keep giving me, keep giving, giving. God, you've given me so much, but I just don't have the time to take what you've given me and give back in service to someone else. You've blessed me with so much, but I'm so busy with all the blessings you blessed me with that I can't serve. Now, you would never pray that. You would never say that. See, when you get on a C team, you'll be serving with people busier than you. You're going to look at them and say, whoa, I thought I was busy. You're going to be serving with business owners, with professionals, with people who simply are as busy as you, but they found the importance of using their God-given gifts in service to serve somebody, somebody else, like the Savior who saved them, who said, I didn't come to be served, but I came to serve. I'm not sure why you're on the fence. Some of you, maybe you've taken a break, and that's fine. Everybody needs a break. You can't play the game all the time. You need to get to the bench, get some water, sit down, and I understand that. Heal whatever it needs, but maybe it's time to get back in the game. Maybe some of you have not, never gotten in the game because you just weren't aware of some of the needs, and we're trying to help you to understand that there's plenty of roles for you to fill, even on a Sunday and throughout the week. So I encourage you, as your pastor, as your shepherd, you know, a true pathway to growth and maybe one of the most underlooked and under involved in, in most churches today, you know, 20% do 80% of the work they say, is to serve. Let's let this be an amazing act of worship. Rachel, you do such a great job with leading us in the act of worship here. But man, there's a thousand opportunities for us to worship in another way. You know, people that walk in, when they get a friendly greeting in the parking lot, even before they get in the building, that's a way that the worship sh service begins. When they come in and they're not confused about where to go and they're not, they don't know what to do with their kids, somebody comes along and says, hey, you got kids, I know right how to help you here. And it's just incredible how the worship service begins even out there. And then living it and all these different things, man. This is the best season when this world is so chaotic and when, when it, things have forever changed. I think these are our best days, but it's going to take all of us. I'm telling you, your pastoral staff has been busier than we've ever been before. We've, we've, you look at the bulletin, all the different things that are going, the new groups that are starting. We're seizing this moment saying, come on, the world is looking for an answer. They're looking for stability, and we've got the best thing in the world the message of the gospel. Are you in? Are you with me? Why don't you stand to your feet? We're going to close in prayer. I need to let you go. Rachel will lead us out in a song, but let's pray today. Father, thank you. Let, let's just stop for a moment. Thank him for the gifts and the abilities that he's given you and he's given me. 
Oh, Lord, there's such untapped potential. So, Lord, we humbly surrender that to you. And, uh, Lord, help us now to take that next step and to get involved in a way that we can serve others, Lord God, because it's so much bigger to do it together than by ourselves. And we know, Lord, you'll help us to reach even greater unity, and we will reach the fullness, the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Let's sing as we go.